It is a crucial spell of fixtures coming up now in this Builder Nation save. It's been a tough start to the season. There are five teams cut adrift who are going to be in that battle at the bottom. We are one of them and we face another today. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 38 of this Builder Nation save from Distillery with me, Daniel. It might well be called Lifting Spirits, but that is not happening for us at the moment because we are struggling near the bottom of the table. There is no doubt in my mind at the moment that this is threatening to be a big relegation battle this year. If Dergview beats us, we are back in a mess. So if you're looking forward to seeing who comes out on top in that big battle of five at the bottom of the table, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Don't forget to check out our sponsor HelloFresh. Thank you to them for supporting the video. You can find a link in the description to get loads of money off. And of course, it does help support the channel too. But we have got to reflect on an awful lot of defeats. You were with me for back-to-back -back defeats against Glentor and Alan. Yes, we got a result against Crusaders the game after. Yes, we beat Carrick early in the season who are right down there as well. But against any opposition of any quality, we've lost. And annoyingly, every single defeat this season has been by the odd goal but for now let's look at the results since you were last here a big 2-1 win away against crusaders which at the time looked like a little bit of a surprise i guess since that we've seen that they're absolutely awful this year two goals for leon boyd one immediately after they equalized as well a really pivotal win away from home but in that game latifa got injured didn't return until last week. Against Linfield, we lost 1-0 at home, but did have to change a few of the players. Against Glenarvan, though, it was made worth it. Orkin and Buchanan with extra time goals after Barry Coffey had given us an early lead. But lovely to see some of the youngsters contributing off the bench. That Buchanan goal, actually, was set up by Andrew Miller, but they're both still getting worse in training. I do not get it. But either way, we got the two wins, and at the moment... They're what are keeping us out the relegation zone. I do want to sort of reflect on a bit of a worry, which is we haven't won a home game yet this season. All three wins on the road. But I do look at that as well and say, look at the sides we faced at home. Yes, Porter down on the opening day. We battered. We should have beaten them. But after that, we've played Larne, Linfield and Cliftonville. Cliftonville currently top. Larne and Linfield, the last two champions. I don't think we can be too harsh on the lads. Into October, though, it has been a really frustrating month. We lost 2-1 against Cliftonville despite having the lead at half-time. Leon Boyd did score the goal in that one. There's the injury to Muckle Hatton I talked about. A 3-1 defeat in the cup. Again, Kofi Orkin got the goal, but we managed to throw it away. We just haven't got the staying power in these matches. A 1-0 defeat against Balamina, 88th minute they got their goal. And then a 3-1 defeat at home to Porter down in the cup. Lots of rotation, it didn't work. A consolation for Barry Coffey, and the rest of it was an absolute battering. So today against Derg View, we need to bounce back. These are one of those games that we've got to target as winnable. Look at November with Crusaders and Porter down. Winnable. Three of the next four games are going to be decisive. And this one is a chance to win, a genuine chance, to win our first home game of the season. There is no doubt that bar the five of us in that mix at the bottom, we haven't got a chance of beating anyone. And the issue is that you look at Carrick Crusaders, who we beat, Porter down, who we were very close against. I know Clonarvon, we got a one-off result against, but... We are not consistent enough. We're not drawing games. We're not picking up enough single points when we're in games that we often lose by the odd goal. We just don't have that goal threat. So going and looking at the squad now, will the crucial bit of the jigsaw be the return from injury for Chris Latifa and the new contract for Leon Boyd? First time he's not been unhappy, although it will change at the end of the year because we're not going to be able to afford the training facilities. He wouldn't sign a deal without it. He's still declining which is something that's bugging me this year. Lots of players declining, not training well. Their personalities aren't improving despite mentoring groups and despite a lot of first-team football. And as a result, people like Leon Boyd, they're not going to reach their heights, which is frustrating. Connor Mitchell wants to leave the club. He'll be going in January, either on loan or permanently. And at the moment, it's just a clinging on job. Can we stay outside that relegation zone? Can we finish 10th or above? That's all I need this year. I'll even take 11th if we win the playoff. So let's go and get through to the fixtures. The first of two big games today. It's Distillery v Derg View. It's 9th versus 10th. And whoever wins it will be ahead in the table at the end of this episode. So let's go and talk to the lads. Let's go and pick our team. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. They've got a 4-4-2. So we're going to have to be very careful at the back. 
And this is the team and squad that we've gone for today. I should mention as well that we did break our attendance record against Linfield. Over 2,500 in for a league fixture, but all bar 160 of them were away fans. So we're even getting outnumbered at our home ground a lot. It's great financially. It's actually got us back above zero for the first time. That's led to a few other things we'll talk about later. But it is a problem that at home... We're almost like the away side from the terraces as well. In terms of the lineup today, though, you can see exactly what we've gone for. I'm looking at Ethan Ross and potentially in the next few weeks, I might change him to a goalkeeper on defend because he does seem to be better at that sort of shot stopping stuff. He's not one who likes to rush out. And in fact, we're going to experiment now because we've not won a home game all season. What's the worst that can happen? He's in goal. We've got Bell and Dobb in the fullbacks, McDowell and Ork in the centre halves. Bell is one of those improving again. Either it's just left backs this year or just people with good personalities, but he ain't going to be here long. So enjoy him while he is. Crow and Levinston in the middle. Definitely the weak spot of the team. It's the one thing I'm going to look for in January is can we get a replacement for Levinston? Get ourselves a proper controlling midfielder in. So I feel we're losing that battle a bit at the minute. We had Beck last year. We might have a look for him again or even someone of greater quality. And then further forward, of course, we've got Latifa, Coffey and Convy. Latifa not fully fit. Coffey gets tired quite quickly and Convy not as strong off the left wing. We could, of course, try and get a left winger in in January. Drop Coffey there. Bring Convy into the middle and put a new left winger in. Leon Boyd is up front. He's been poor for three games now, but he's got his new contract. He's got his unhappiness ended. And as we saw earlier in the season, that can make a very big difference. Few game changers and a few youngsters on the bench. Let's see how we get on. It's Distillery Dirk View. It's a massive game at the bottom of the table because whichever one loses this match is going to be very close to the dotted line. And here is the pretty strong Dirk view side for today. They've got quality on the bench that I recognise in McCloskey and Dean Jarvis. They've also, though, got the likes of Ronan Wilson and Ryan Wade in the team. They are players that I know can give quality, but hopefully it won't be enough to beat us. Let's go and get through the dressing room. Let's put an end to this poor run of form. Go and get yourselves a home win. Go and assert yourselves and try and make the most, even of a set piece or something. Just get us in the lead. No big away following today, so won't boost our bank balance, but might just give us that edge in terms of not playing against the crowd. Well, it's been a very quiet first half an hour here, which might not be a bad thing because it means we're not conceding chances. But this is scrappy as we return in the middle of the pitch and we don't want to give away the first chance and the first goal. We found it really hard to get back into games this season as Latifa gets it on the right to Dobbin. Currently, the skipper of this team finds Levinston. Gets the ball back to Orkin at the back and he finds Dobbin again. Two in midfield, but again, lots of times we're taking the safe option, the safe pass. That ball to Boyd is pretty aimless, is against our game plan and it's going to cost us, isn't it? Orkin header up more than away. Levinston does well there, back to Ross, but we are struggling to control that midfield. Not got someone showing for it, really creating the option as Bell goes away down the left. Inside to Coffey. There's a run from Convy, but instead goes to Crow. Boyd's got options out wide. Latifa beats his man. He's in one-on-one. -on -one. This is the moment, is it? No. Straight at the goalkeeper. Got to find a finish there, but a much better performance. We just need the goal to come with it. Don't do what you did against Porter down as Convy. Free kick 30 yards out. Just tip wide at a post. I'm starting to get that feeling of frustration. That feeling of inevitability. That we're going to dominate, create chances, not score the goal and then get punished at the other end. It's happened a few times this year. That's a penalty kick, though. Out of nothing. James Convy, I think, is the best taker, so we're going to have to trust him with it. We just need the goal. I don't really care how it comes. It's a soft penalty. It probably is a little bit harsh on Dirk View. We've deserved the lead overall, and we get it. James Convy, cool as you like, sends the keeper the wrong way. The celebrations start, we go 1-0 up, but as you saw in the last episode review, we've had a few of those where we've gone a goal up and thrown this away, so we need to make sure we're careful. At the break, Porter down are losing, some of the other sides down there struggling, and Mooney is about to be sent off for Dirk View. Get the party out, 1-0 up, a man up, and now we've got a real chance. Let's start playing like we were last season. Let's start dominating the matches. No shots on target for the visitors. A dominant display with a goal. And so far I'm happy. You lads keep this up and do not throw it away against 10 men. Having said that, we're back almost immediately. Not even two gone in the second half. But we win the ball back on halfway with Levinston. Who finds Oren Crow. Has coffee in support. Makes a great run. Beats two. Goes for the shot. 
It's pretty ambitious, to be honest. He could have run him further. He could have tried and looked for the cross, but instead goes for a speculative effort and it stays just one. But we're by far the better side. We are now dominating. We're starting to look confident and we're pushing Dirk View into the bottom two as convy has got a free kick in a dangerous position. Good ball up towards Crow, headed away as far as Orkin on the left wing. He crosses into McDowell. The two centre-halves combine, but he heads it just wide. It was a great opportunity in fairness. Probably should have scored. Not to be, though, as it's a long ball forward. Orkin heads away. Coffee flicks on. I just feel without that second goal, there's a sting in the tail somewhere. We've been in so many silly goals this season. I just can't feel confident. A scannel carries it forward, shoots from distance, just over the bar. Don't let them back into it. Latifa's going to have to come off soon. He's already done an hour. Bell's on the yellow as well, but Levinston's got the corner. Orkin's up. Nobody wins it. Coffee gets there. Chips back in. Wade hoofs clear. McDowell will carry the ball though. Gets it on halfway. Finds Orkin. Looks for the long ball forward towards Convy. Well over hit. It's a poor ball. Again, we're looking much more direct than we normally do. Levinston wins it back though for Coffee. They can't get out. Boyd's in. Is he onside? He scored the goal. Will the flag go up? I'm not celebrating yet. Now I am. Leon Boyd. New contract. Happiness restored and the goal scoring form restored. 2 0 to Lisbon Distillery. This one's going to be a win. Let's get Latifa off for the youngster Buchanan. We'll leave the other ones a few more minutes. I just want to make sure of this. And with 15 to go, I think we now can think about Saturday's game. We've got a few players that are a bit more tired, obviously, one on a yellow card as well. So Curtis Bell will be replaced by Mark Edgar, it's the only option out there. I'm also going to look in midfield. Do we take off Levinston or Crow? I don't think so. They've had good games. So Barry Coffey will be replaced by Killian Healy. And we'll leave the last one for a few more minutes. In fact, we've got two left. We'll wait till the 80 minute mark. And then if it's still 2-0, we can take off tired legs. Well, it is still 2-0. It's looking very comfortable at the minute. So on will come Daniel McGill for Kofi Orkin. A proper personality, a leader. We just swap the centre half rolls around. Make sure nothing gets done. And then what can we do further forward? Boyd is fit. Convy struggling a little bit. So do you know what? Have we got anyone who can actually play out there? I don't think we have. I'm going to leave Convy off and I'm going to bring on Ian Walker. He'll have to play. He is left footed as a winger on support. We'll just do that. We've only got 10 minutes to go. Let's just make sure we shore things up as they've got to throw on the left hand side. Do not create a grandstand finish. Edgar back to Ross is very composed defending. Ross has done well in that new goalkeeping duty as Boyd knocks the ball down for Heaney. Can we put some real gloss on this? Improve the goal difference. Buchanan in from the right. Shots in. How on earth has that found the back of the net? It was almost a back pass to the keeper. It was a little tiddler and it somehow crept under him, squirmed under his right arm and into the corner of the net. Buchanan is really playing well this year. Goals, assists a lot, but he's not improving. And that's the thing that's annoying me as Dobbin picks it up on the right to McGill. Real good day at the office, this. A comfortable win. Gonna have to show more games with you guys watching as Dobbin chips over. Buchanan in again. He scored again. Four goals for the season. Just improve your attributes. Train well. And we have got an absolute gem on our hands. He's a proper player. He delivers every time. And with a 4-0 victory, we are flying up to 8th place. Got a better goal difference than all four below us. Two of them played each other in Carrick and Crusaders. But that's a five-point gap to the bottom two. And at this stage, that's the most important bit. Let's go and get ahead to the weekend. It's a tough game against Coleraine. They're up in fourth place. They won at Larne again. Young Bobby Harvey, our former man, sent off. But we can't be worrying about that. Those battles at the top are for later years. But now, we've just got to try and sneak points. And just like that, we're back for the second one of the day. A much trickier test away at Coleraine, but we are still yet to lose a game by more than one goal. And if we can find that goal scoring form for Leon Boyd, I'm confident we could turn a few of those into draws, which would be crucial at this stage. So let's go and get through the tactical meeting via one little bit of news, because I talked about the finances from having big away crowds coming to visit us. And there has been a little benefit of that. Because despite the fact we're only just in a bat financially, we have managed to get our first coaching badge approved. So we are going now for a National C license, just trying to give us a little bit more clout, a little bit more in terms of reputation, coaching experience for the training ground, try and sort some of these personalities out. Hopefully something will make a difference. But for now, it's a results business. So let's go and get this done. Two players can't feature today, Donaghy and Murphy in defence. They're both, of course, on loan from Coleraine. So let's go and pick our team 
We'll be back in a minute to run through it, but looking at the fitness, there won't be many changes. And by not many, I mean just one in a starting 11, and it's a bold one as well. Matthew Buchanan came off the bench and scored two goals. He is rewarded with a start for Latifa. He's rebuilding his fitness after injury. He's played two in a row now, so he'll just drop down to the bench for this one. Young Andrew Miller, who is improving a bit, is on there as well. He is in because both of the Coleraine players are ineligible. And that leaves us with 10 of the same 11, both fullbacks, Dobbin being the other one, improving massively on the training ground. This is where the personalities are important. If we can get some of the other lads up to speed as well, if football can benefit people like Buchanan, this is going to be a very good season. Let's go and get away to Coleraine. Anything other than a defeat is spectacular. I'm not sure we're going to get it. We'll try our very best to cling on. Well, it's a strong Colrain side and plenty of familiarity in there as well. Gareth Dean, Conor McDermott, a very good player. Lyndon Kane, Jamie Glackin, Matthew Shevlin, lots of quality players at this level. And they've also on the bench, I don't know if you've noticed, got Andrew Sally, the man who was top scorer at Porter Down last year and the second top scorer in the second division. So him v Leon Boyd could be a reunited battle today. But let's go and get through the dressing room. I want to pick up where we left off because we were brilliant against Dergview. If we can keep that goal difference down, maybe nick a draw. This will be a very good episode. Big crowd in at Coleraine. Very narrow formation. Got a little feeling our midfield might get overrun. Well, a fairly positive start for the first 10 minutes. Unfortunately, though, we've conceded a crap goal from a set piece straight away. I was going to say it wasn't that dangerous a position. Dobbin, the man I praise pre-match, is the man who's cost us. And we're just going to have to go cautious now because we cannot afford to get overrun and concede three or four. But Colrain looked right up for this and we don't seem to cope with it as Baird picks the ball up for Kane at the back for them. McConville across the centre half to O'Brien. He goes long downfield towards Shevlin. Orkin does well to win it. Coffey goes long towards Boyd though. Was he onside? Does he finish it? Of course he finishes it. Why on earth would I even ask the question? When Leon Boyd is happy, we score goals. The question is, can we hold on defensively? This result now, I would snap your hand off for it, but we're immediately at the other end with a dangerous free kick and Jamie Glackin puts it just over the bar. Only 73 minutes to hold on. The final whistle cannot come soon enough. As we're back down the right-hand side with Buchanan. Into the side today. Going to be interesting to see how he copes. According to the assistant, he's actually got the same star ability. I'm not so sure that's fair, but Boyd gets himself in. Oh, just wide. He was on his left-hand side, which was maybe the slight issue there. He does miss a rare one. He's human after all. But we're coming into this game. 27 minutes gone, we look a threat on the counter, but here come Colrain as Orkin wins it back. Very aggressive play, but Coffey loses it again immediately. Through to Shevlin, now Orkin's out of position, but Ethan Ross is to the rescue. Good save down to his left. He's got options out wide here, and just roll out to Dobbin, but instead hoofs long, and that is absolutely aimless. McDonald gets it into Baird, and Kane into midfield for Glackin. Through ball towards Stewart. Shevlin's with him, doesn't need him. Hits the woodwork with a thunderous strike. We get away with it again. Ross clears downfield, breathes a huge sigh of relief. Crusaders starting to pick up points at the bottom. They're beating Dirk View. Not the worst result, really. Keeps them both five points behind, as we've got a free kick in our own half with Orkin. Playing a few one-twos, but we're not really going anywhere. If anything, they're pressing us and putting us under pressure. That they've missed a header at the back from the long ball. Leon Boyd in again. When he's able to get into that box, he's a real threat. But when he has to shoot from 20, 25 yards, he's not got the pace to get all the way and he's not got the power in the finish. That's the one difference with him. It's why I really want him to develop. But the mentoring group, as we mentioned, just not working. I'm going to tell the lads we're pleased. Keep it up. You're doing really well. You don't need to look anxious. Try and enjoy the occasion. Thrive on it. At the moment, they don't seem to be doing so. We haven't got our backup right back with Dobbin having a poor game because, of course, he's on loan from Coleraine. So this is going to be a clinging on job for now. Buchanan's having a struggle from the start. Not quite as easy when you're not just being an impact player against tired legs. As Dobbin mops up on the right-hand side, finds Ross's keeper. Curtis Bell out. Had a warning about his fatigue, but after the next game, because we're not in any of the cups, we've apparently got three weeks off, so that might give him a chance to recuperate. As Buchanan on the right to Dobbin. Options down the line if he can find them. Instead just goes wide himself and plays back to Orkin. All very safe, all very comfortable, but are we going to create a goal? As Buchanan tries to turn the tide, through ball towards Boyd. 
dealt with easily by McConville. Not sure that was a key highlight personally, but Gareth Dean has it. This will probably lead to one. Long ball downfield. Shevlin finds Stewart. Really good play. Spins off the back of Orkin. And of course, he finishes it. The one goal defeat is back here again. Oh, it's so frustrating. We just, we're in every game. We've just not quite got the quality. And now we've got the worst news of the season. Leon Boyd has picked up a knock. We cannot afford that. At least we've only got one game in the next month. As we're on the counter again. But we cannot afford him out any length of time. He's still chasing this one, but not really with any enthusiasm. McConville goes back to his keeper. We'll make the sub after this highlight. O'Brien goes long towards Shevlin. Down for Stewart. There's three running off him. Glacken's in. It's 3-1. And that record of losing by one goal might be over. Glacken makes it three. The star striker is injured. This is not a good day. Let's go and make some subs. It looks like we're going straight from the kickoff with the highlights as well, which is not a good sign. McAllatton will come on up front. Actually better according to the star rating. And he's a good finisher too. Crow's knackered in the middle. Heaney on. Coffee will drop in. We're also going to take off Buchanan, who struggled, who's anxious. Latifa on on the right. I'm looking further back at things we can do. I might take Levinston off as well. We'll put Coffee Playmaker, Heaney in the middle, Young Miller as number 10. And then Daniel McGill for Daniel Dobbin, who just had a shocker, hasn't he? A fault for the first goal. Anxious, struggling as captain. So let's get the model citizen on. Five changes made, 25 to go. And first, we've got to endure a kickoff. This is going to be a big defeat, isn't it? As Orkin gets the ball to Crow. And this is the issue as soon as there's two games a week. The first 11 cannot play at that level twice as we've given the ball away ridiculously. Glackin picks it up to Doran. He gets the ball wide to Mitchell. It's going to be four before the subs. In across the box. It's floating all over the place. And we somehow get it clear out wide again. Mitchell crosses a second time. Convy brings it away. Just get the highlight over with, please. Gives it back to Dobbin. Put it out of play. Let the subs be made. Buchanan down the right. Long ball towards Boyd. He's going to get there as well. He's injured, but he scored again. Leon Boyd makes it 3-2, and with the subs being made now, we might just have a chance. Leon Boyd keeps us in it despite having a little knock. And at 3-2, who knows? Stranger things have happened. It does continue to look unlikely though, as Coleraine back on the front foot on the left-hand side. Advanced position, finds McDonnell. Sally's on, gets it wide to Mitchell. Good cross to McDermott, completely unmarked. Great save by Ross to tip it onto the post. Latifa brings it away, it's end-to-end -end stuff. It's frantic, I'm having to talk quick to get through the highlights in time. Latifa to the byline, man in the middle. The cross isn't quite right. It could have been 3-3 and it's still a chance. McGill wins the ball back, but it peters out. And here come Coleraine again. O'Brien forward. Orkin deals with it. White to Latifa. I would not mind nicking a point here. What is that pass? There's so many poor bits of technique being shown today. And it just ends up becoming a sort of frantic end to a match where no one can keep the ball. Though Andrew Miller gets on the end of that. Oh, just over the bar. That was a thunderous effort from Miller but not quite on target. And with five minutes of stoppage time to go, we trail by a goal again. It's into the back post, headed away by O'Brien. Heaney picks it up. Not seen much of him either since coming on. McGill gets it. Got options behind him. Orkin's one of them. Chips forward towards McAllatton. And Dean does really well. Keeper comes, takes everything and make sure he claims the ball. He'll go for the big kick over the top where we've committed players forward. Orkin heads away as far as McGill. What can a sub do? Tries to release Latifa. It's just over hit. And again, Coleraine win it back. It's a really good game of football in terms of entertainment, not in terms of quality and technical ability. McGill heads it straight back to McKendry. Doran picks the ball up, looking to get it done once and for all. Into McKendry, who drags his shot wide. Coleraine should have been out of sight. Let's go attack him for the last three minutes. I'm not sure it's going to lead to a good outcome, though. And it doesn't. It's another one goal defeat. Every single one this season has been the same, but overall in this episode, we'll certainly take it. Well, the good news is we got Leon Boyd off quick enough. Just two to three days he's going to be out injured for. Bell's got a fitness concern, but a week off now, and then virtually everyone can have a week's holiday because we'll have three weeks before facing Porter down. If you did enjoy this one, though, a really good win against Dergview. Disappointment at Coleraine, but... We're competitive, and I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Should I be happy that we're competing? 
and feel it's just a matter of time? Or should I be worried that we keep losing by the odd goal? Let me know your thoughts on that. If you want to stay up to date and see if we can survive, as again, it just starts to tighten up at the bottom. Five points separate all of the bottom five. It's going to be one hell of a battle. If you want to find out how we get on for the rest of the year, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. And while you wait for us to return, I'll put the head coach playlist above my head now. See you next time. Mm -hmm.